So just before, of course, 24 hours before the opening ceremony, the opening ceremony director was fired because it turned out in 1998 on an improv show, a Japanese sort of version of Whose Line Is It Anyway? When they were looking at paper cutouts of children, he made a joke that, yes, they were left over from the, the Jewish Holocaust. Going for an edgy joke there, it was a throwaway single line. It was broadcast on NHK, but, uh, you know, again, the uh, the machine of Olympic haters um, in Japan is really unstoppable. If they find out, this guy's from Ramens, which is like one of my favorite comedy troops. I mean, it definitely didn't show the guy to be like an anti-Semite or anything like that. It was a terrible, it wasn't even like funny as a joke. It wasn't even worth the risk of throwing it out there was no payoff at all it was, it was a dumb thing to say but you know someone finding out that he he threw out a, a stupid line in an improv in 1998 um you know but still he was immediately fired so 24 hours before the, <laughs> which is adding to the uh you know child molester you know disabled child molester sexual molester abuser bully uh musical composer i mean again um <laughs> And again, he had admitted to that in print. They didn't background check anyone because they picked everybody from the Talent Guild of Japan, which is like a labor union of people who are, and, and, you know, and it's just full of people like this. And they were just passing around their jobs to each other. But the problem being that they, they're not used to being accountable to anyone outside of the guild. And it turns out everyone's got a rap sheet of just doing terrible shit, including this person. And this was kind of the flaw with the opening ceremony was that rather than the typical opening ceremony thing that they do where they get like a cast of thousands and show the history of the co country and the culture and whatnot they just do kind of a, a you know a, a, a quick uh, you know tv variety show special where you know all the famous faces and whatnot just and this is a, a, someone from that from that community who just built this up more or less like a sort of a quasi variety nhk sort of a special uh, thing it was okay it was okay as, 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 as a uh, as an opening ceremony it wasn't really the epic sort of opening ceremony i really remember the opening to the sochi games the ones in russia um, you know, and they showed the whole history of Russia, and it was genuinely interesting. It was well done. I mean, you know, um, this is the country that owns freaking the ballet and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this wasn't anything close to that, and they fired the director 24 hours before the start of the show. The result was inevitably that the Olympics ran uh, four hours over. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that was in part because of this guy. Uh, so you know, it was it was it was okay. It could have gone a bit faster, as usual. The athletes come, even though they cut down the number of athletes coming in. The athletes took a long time to come, and you expect that. Apparently, Bach and uh, Hashimoto were supposed to talk for a total of nine minutes. Um, you know, Bach talked for twenty minutes, which is funny because I thought he talked for like five hours. Um, he should not have talked. You know, the emperor getting up after and say, "And I declare the games open." Um, that's how you do it. That's why he's the emperor. In and out. I mean, talk about not reading a room. I mean, a room that was practically empty, but, uh, you know, Bach just going on and on really ruined it. And if there was a director, if they hadn't fired the, the, the Holocaust loving, um, you know, comedian um, who was supposed to be in charge, maybe that would have, uh, maybe he would have been able to get the big hook and pull him off, but it didn't happen. So that part of it sucked but actually the rest of it was good it wasn't great but it was good you know it was okay i i i enjoyed misha at the start she looked like a huge rainbow kakigori which apparently was the colors were deliberate she was uh paying apart from the fact she is like the best singer in japanese pop music like has been the whole time i've been in japan um genuinely talented you know japanese pop groups often pick people that can't sing on purpose i'm looking at smap uh as well as freaking akb 40 i could go on that's a rabbit hole i'm not going to follow that but uh you know she can genuinely sing uh she wore a pro lgbt sort of message while she was singing the uh, anthem that was classy there were the drones were cool um the, the the pictograms i mean again that was very sort of nhk you know um design art kind of thing it was clever but it was like 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 really is that all that you've got kind of a thing it, it was cool i mean I, that was entertaining <laughs> a little bit small scale um, the original show of building something and everyone dancing around just seemed a little bit to me weak honestly there's so much that in Japanese culture you could do the original plan for the show that was being designed there's a suggestion by Mikiko apparently to do a whole takeoff of a reenactment of freaking Akira they would have had the flash motorcycle apparently Densu like vetoed it and they put this in instead so there were plans for a much better version of the show there was also a plan for a version of the opening ceremony of course that had the Olympic 
which thank heavens that didn't happen. I mean, it could have gone a lot of directions, I suppose. And while we didn't get the best version of the opening ceremony, it certainly could have been a lot worse. But in the end, it had no freaking director and it went for four and a half hours and, you know, little children were crying at the end of it. All I must say, I mean, overall, it was it was okay. It wasn't really particularly memorable, but um, you know what? After all of the crap, including, um, you know, all the stuff leading up to it and all the daily scandals that I just got so exhausted of talking about even like a year ago, we finally got into it. And, you know, um, they they lit the torch. Naomi Osaka lit the torch with like my favorite thing, like hydrogen. <laughs> that thing, apart from the fact it burns super hot with the fuel of stars, it like emits steam and water from when you burn it. It's like awesome, right? And so, yes, they have a hydrogen uh, thing and we'll watch it there, the, the, the cauldron. Thank heavens it wasn't like Mori. I would have lost my shit if, if Mori had uh, lit the cauldron. Uh, and of course, it was lit by uh, none other than Naomi Osaka. Um, uh, that was awesome. Uh, as, of course, uh, Rui Hachimura, uh, along with, uh, I believe, a wrestler, a famous wrestler, um, uh, Yui something or other. I should actually remember that, but I don't. <laughs> uh, but, but Rui carried the flag. And I talked about this actually on a special flipping back i was actually um akasan called me up the other day and he said hey would you want to come on and do a show with give me a give me a break man give me a flake man and a bunch of other random youtubers and talk about what we think about the olympics and how it's all going and i said yeah i would love to do that so we had a great talk about that and i shared my opinion on that as well which is that you know after all these never-ending olympic related negatives and there are there are tons of negatives that you could talk about for this if there is a part of apart from the fact that um i think now is definitely the time that um you know we do start to now that it's going ahead it should not have gone ahead i believe but now that it is going ahead it's time to actually appreciate that one the tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of volunteers that have worked so hard for years and gone through a lot of crap could you imagine working in an organization with all that going on above and remember all the volunteers that quit because of it so think about the poor people who are left behind who, who stayed on to actually set up these olympics all of these facilities all of the events all of the stuff for the the athletes um you know with nothing in doing that through a torrent of public abuse and skepticism um, you know, they've put a lot of work into this and they deserve appreciation for their hard work. Uh, the ordinary people that have been working on it, as do, of course, the athletes who are here. Not the best time to do it, but now that they're here, we should appreciate them. And, and look, it's paying off. These Olympics are great to follow. So um, I, I really, I, I myself came to a moment that I tweeted about myself and that I mentioned on the show, um, which is this. I, I think that some people have gotten so used to just ragging on the Olympics, it just becomes relentlessly negative. And look, I, I believe that some of the people who have been criticizing the Olympics just do so because, you know, they don't even like sports. They, they just like complaining. And there are some people who are just genuinely toxic people who are enjoying the, the chance to be toxic about something constantly. I'm worried that not so much about those people. I'm worried about people who have been sucked in by those people into themselves and maybe myself into constantly being focused myself on all the negativity. And there's been a lot to focus on. And becoming toxic myself, I'm looking at this nothing but negative. And you know, from my perspective, it's time to actually switch over, I think, and appreciate. You know, you don't have to give a pass to the government. I believe the government should be dragged over the coals for even going ahead with the Olympics. And they shouldn't be allowed off the hook just because everyone's enjoying it now, which is, I know, what they're banking on. People should still be held accountable for their terrible decisions. Um, although, you know, all in the IOC, in Tokyo, in the national government, but at the same time... Um, you know, the, the athletes and the volunteers and the people who are actually working on this thing, they don't deserve that. And they actually deserve appreciation. I think they've actually done an amazing thing. And I think it's actually just for the mental health of people that have gotten into the uh, the, the, the whirlpool of um, just being negative about everything. I think for my own mental health, it's actually an important time to switch over and actually remember to be appreciative. So that's what I'm doing now that it's starting. Uh, I still think they shouldn't. The Olympics should have been cancelled. I don't think they should have gone forward at all. I think we should have just tried again in another ten years or twenty years or whatever. But uh, now that they're happening, I am actually genuinely really appreciative of it, and, and I'm loving it right now. So that's overall, I've decided to try not to be um, so relentlessly negative and not get wrapped up in following people who are just, you know, yeah, sure, if you want to focus on negatives, you can find them everywhere. And I must admit, since I sort of told myself I was going to try to not be toxic about the Olympics, and then I went back to my Twitter feed and I was seeing particularly what the, the media the, who are still looking for negatives to publish about it, including like just any small thing. You sort of notice that that sort of is their job is just to find things to rag on. And I was kind of like, like, do you have to be like that all the time? Like, 
you know, surely you can find some good stories as well. So, um, you know, um, that's where I'm at with that. That said, I mean, Buck, read the freaking room. I mean, that's... <laughs> Uh, Buck, just, uh, please, please, uh, that guy single-handedly, um, you know, endangered the whole, um, opening ceremony. Um, Japan government, by the way, has boosted the target for renewables. I won't talk about that in detail, but it was not a mistake that they actually used a hydrogen, uh, cauldron. Japan is going all in on this, as you can see, and they're lifting, they're lifting the target for renewable energy to like 38% by 2035, I think, which is pretty, pretty remarkable. I mean, in my time, when I was a policy consultant on this, you couldn't do more than 5%, or at least on wind and photovoltaics. So, you know, it shows that the technology is really coming up as well. But anyway, um... Rui Hachimuri, one of the biggest positives is the way that I think sports leads the way in promoting social change and awareness. You know, the, the Japan is full of kids like Rui Hachimura and Naomi Osaka and so on. But, you know, they, they, they often live in towns where they feel isolated and different. They get seen as isolated and different and people might very well question, well, are you from here or not? When people see that uh, Hakim Sunny Brown and, you know, uh, Rui Hachimura, people like this are Japanese and representing Japan. And, um, you know, um, held up as champions and heroes of Japan. You know, they are not only Japanese, they are cool Japanese. And people, kids start playing basketball and saying, OK, I'm going to be Rui Hachimura for this game. Um, you know, uh, I, I think that's such a great thing for the kids that are similar to them and for fostering acceptance of the fact that Japanese society is changing. And you see all these stupid comments on, on, uh, on, on Twitter the last few days. Oh, Japan has black people. Yes. Japan has, there are black Japanese people, there are people with mixed African Japanese heritage, and you know, there are a number who are just awesome, you know, and, and, and I think this is one thing sports does really well, it does lead the way for promoting awareness of diversity and acceptance of and embracing of diversity, because you can see it paying off, um, of course it's way more than just that. But it's a really visible way to promote that sort of acceptance of the fact that Japan is not a homogenous country. And what I find most galling is when the um, the resistance to that acceptance, you know, people, if you go looking, if you're searching on, on Twitter for trolls who, uh, you know, say that Rui Hachimura doesn't look Japanese enough for me, I'm sure you'll be able to find some, some drunk moron troll somewhere in Japanese saying that. But what I find is it's much easier to find people with those kind of views outside of Japan who feel like, you know, who feel upset at, at having their image of how Japan is supposed to be being disrupted. This happened with the rugby teams. It happened with the Australian, the newspaper, the Australian. Um, there's an article questioning whether Naomi Osaka was really the best person to be representing Japan uh, for, for, for lighting the, the, the cauldron. Um, you know, and whether she was really Japanese enough. Like, uh, the Australian newspaper was, was questioning that. Um, you know, it's, I'm, we're sorry to disappoint you with the fact that Japan is not as racially pure as you want it to be, but it is not, right? And it's actually, uh, aside from all the wonderful things that are happening, and you think about that, you think about with the skateboarding today, skateboarding is actually, you know, Japan has great skateboarders, but yet it's socially stigmatized, like it's banned in so many areas, it's hard to do anywhere. And you see the event where um, not only did a Japanese person win gold in it today, but the other ones, you know, the other the other top athletes, um, you know, covered in tattoos, were you know, listening to music while they were doing it. You know, they were sort of, uh, I, I think, for promoting pride and acceptance of these things as things that Japan not only should accept, but actually should realize that they should embrace and love and appreciate because they've given Japan a freaking gold medal. Um, same with the surfing thing. I mean, again, when the when the when the pandemic came down, it was like there was this big backlash against this idea: why are people selfishly going surfing? Japan is doing great at the surfing today. You know, like uh, J again, J Japan has great waves, great beaches. It produces great surfers. Don't stigmatize the culture. You know, and, and, and again, so I think these demonstration sports that have come in are actually great. I mean, the, of course, they were chosen partly because Japan knew they'd have a good chance of winning medals. But if the Olympics can accept these sports, why can't regular people? Right. So. I actually think the Olympics, again, you, if there's a positive that comes from the Olympics, it's this kind of, uh, that it can it can pull and promote and lead social change or acceptance of social changes that are already happening that people are not aware of. And I think that you can already see that, you know, um, and I'm loving it. You know, I, that that's the good part about it. Um, I was featured in an Indian newspaper. This guy just hit me up on Facebook and said, hey, can I talk to you? And he was um, in Mumbai at a train station. He called me up on uh, on WhatsApp and we, we talked and I, I, I gave him a quote. And uh, he asked, "What does?" Well, it was the day before the the, the the opening ceremony, and he said, 
uh, what do people in Tokyo think about it? I said, well, look, I don't, I don't know what everyone in Tokyo thinks. I've just been locked in a room the last year and a half. Um, but I did give him a quote. I'll quote myself because I am vain. Uh, and my quote is, <laughs> I, don't, I think he thinks this is my real name. I'll, uh, yeah, I'm, that's fine with me. Once the sports begin, the focus will shift, says Hiko Simon. A 45-year-old, I said I worked in an IT company, which I do. Uh, I'm not really an IT professional per se, but yeah. I like sport, and I want it to be a good event for the athletes and volunteers who made it happen. I still think it's a mistake. <laughs> I think he summed up my mixed feelings in that quote very well. Uh, you know, yeah, they should have cancelled it, but now that they're doing it, let's support it. That's my view. Um, he quoted, quoted me perfectly. Thank you, uh, Mihir Vasavda. Um, and, and welcome to Tokyo. I understand that he's just arrived, and I hope he has an awesome time here. Oh, yeah, there were bears. Um, that surprised me. Apparently at the base, at the, the softball in Fukushima. Um, there was a bear warning outside of the stadium that there were like bears running around. Apparently, they cut down a forest which was like full of the bears while they were making the facility. So the bears are understandably pissed off, and they're like walking around attacking people up there. So, I must admit, I mean, I hadn't, I, I had a lot of things on my bingo card. There was a typhoon coming at the moment. It is typhoon season, so you could expect a typhoon to come. You could expect, you know, um, Holocaust, uh, you know, uh, joking people to be fired. You, you, there was a lot of things on my card, but bear bear attacks were not. So, um. Yeah, credit to the Fukushima Bears <laughs> uh, for, for coming up with unpredictable challenges for the Olympics. And, of course, the poo in Tokyo Bay. Um, if a typhoon comes over, that generally causes overflow of all of the, 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 the over, uh, outflow systems. Um, that's not going to be good for the triathlon, which is due to be after the uh, up, up pending typhoon, uh, which is going to mean that there's going to be more floating in Tokyo Harbor than just the triathletes. I, I, I wouldn't go in there on a bet, honestly. Uh, my setup today, um, this is what I'm looking at right now. I've actually, uh, NHK, actually, if you go to the webpage, I put this on Twitter today, you can actually view 32 different live streams of the Olympics at once. You can watch everything happening at the Olympics live at the same time. I could actually show all 32 screens if I wanted to. I picked out uh, on this one, I've got the, the surfing on the far left. On the far right, I've got New Zealand versus Argentina hockey. I've got Nanomi Osaka playing tennis. And uh, what was the other one? Skateboarding there in the middle there. So I was watching four things at once today. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm loving the sports, seriously. And I love the fact that in Japan, especially now with the internet, you're not stuck just with what the channels can show you. You can actually watch multiple things at the same time. It's, it's awesome. I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying the Olympics. That was what I did today.